copper. Copper, one of the most extinct metal on our earth. It's the first metal that's been used widely by humans and the one that changed the history on our planet. It's one of the most common metal on our planet to be known to be discovered by human in many regions about 8,000 years before the birth of Christ. It was the first metal to be smelted from sulfide ores about 5,000 years before the Christ. And it was the first metal to be cast into a shape in the mold the thousand years later. This metal has been used in alloys and was responsible for the start of the Bronze Age. Let's, in the light of human history, talk about this interesting element, copper. One of the longest ages for our people was the Stone Age. It lasted about 2.6 million years. And only recently, since the last big glaciation on the continent started retreating, melting away, see my previous video about Ice Age and Holocene in particular, humans start permanently creating settlements and they start exploring the new elements, new metals, to create the tools, weapons and the luxury items. Stone was available everywhere, in any place. It was plentiful and available to all. However, copper had to be mined or traded and we think that its working created a cast of specialist coppersmiths and the traders, people who are wealthy and powerful, who could afford this metal, who were having the commissions from selling or delivering this metal, and who could purchase the metal artifacts as well. After the glaciers started retreating, we recorded the Neolithic age that started 10,000 years till 7,000 years before present. Following that, the discovery of the copper and its use started the Chalcolithic age. And after, we know that it's sparking started at the Bronze Age. It started about 5,300 years before present in Near East and a century later in Europe. That moment was the most crucial in a modern civilization development. People at that time start establishing settlements, first trades, developing writing skills, and trades between nations. This chalcolithic period is defined as a period when humans discovered how to work copper, why they continue to use stone implements. Humans develop a sedentary lifestyle based on agriculture and communal life in towns and villages. And the new opportunities come and the new difficulties. When the people settle, the first problem they faced with is how to obtain food, stuff and raw materials which are not available in this area. And the answer was its development of first trading links between different communities and cultures. But the many advantages, settlement brought the increase in living standards and leisure time. And therefore, the new technologies could be developed. And the most important was the use of the ores metallurgy. Today we know that Chalcolithic period is the time when stratification began in human societies. Compared to previous Stone Age, which lasted for a long time, Copper was more difficult to source and use. It had then to be worked by specialists who might have been leaders themselves as a result of their expertise, or who sold what they made to an elite or powerful and wealthy individuals, if you can call them that at that time. So copper wasn't the one that creates social divisions, but it's promoted certain trends. So why the copper? What is so special about this metal? If you look in the periodic table, you'll find that the copper standing along the silver and the gold in the group 11. These three metals have one S orbital electron on top of a field D electron shell. And they are characterized by high ductivity and electrical and thermal conductivity. 
Unlike other metals with incomplete D-shells, if you look at the structure of the atoms, metallic bonds in copper are lacking in covalent character and are relatively weak. That's explain its low hardness and high ductility of its crystals. In the bigger scale, it's cause crystal lattice or the grain boundaries, hinders flow of material under applied stress and increasing its hardness. Its softness also explains its high electrical conductivity and high thermal conductivity. Second highest after silver among pure metals at room temperature. And its color is not gray or silver as usually for the metals. It have orange, red or some reddish color due to its low plasma frequency of the metal. It doesn't react with the water so it's quite durable, however it reacts slowly with the atmospheric oxygen and it's start forming a layer. This layer, unlike rust in the moist air, protect the underlying metal from further corrosion and it's make the copper perfect for long-term structures. For example, you're all familiar with the New York City emblemic Statue of Liberty. It's been built in 1886 by the French designer and sculptor Frederick Bertoldi, and it originally had a cast iron armature to which the copper skin was attached. Copper was ideal metal for this, as it resists corrosion from water and seawater, as you know the statue standing just before you're approaching the islands of New York. And we know that today the statue is absolutely green. In French, we call this layer vergigris, and it's layer of copper carbonate that form in contact with the air. And as you know, it will protect the underlying layers from corrosion. If you look at this picture, you can see distinctly how the more modern repetition of the buildings, for example, like here, the fresh copper contrast with the greenish older parts of the building. Similar, the Statue of Liberty was repaired from 1984-1986 because cast iron amateur was more damaged, the iron amateur was more eroded and it was replaced with this stainless steel. Some of the minor reconstructions were done on its skin. In the ancient time, in antiquity, the most of the copper in the Mediterranean was sourced from Cyprus, and that's where the name copper come from. Strabon, back in the day, in his famous work Geography, 23rd year after the Christ, that Cyprus is a second to none of the islands of the Mediterranean. It's rich in wine and oil, produces grain in abundance, and possesses extensive copper mines at Tamasos. Since then it was called Cyprian metal in the Latin, abbreviated to cuprum, which you know is the name in the periodic table, and in English it's changed into the copper. There are several reasons why the copper, along with the gold, was one of the first metals to be worked by humans. First of all, it's extremely plentiful on Earth. It's eighth most common metallic element in Earth's crust, and it's found in the civil rock ores. And it's distinct from other metals by its color, as we say, and by the way it's corroded. And it also could be found in a pure form on the ground as a native copper. Native copper was very plentiful in Europe in the time of discovery, and then it was very fast exhausted in the most populated areas. This metal is very easy to work into small objects by cold hammering. Some suggested that copper working was discovered in the Near East and then exported to Europe, but here we're just finding more evidence that that technology was developed independently in the Near East and Europe, as well in the other parts of the world. And once this easy accessible deposits of native copper been exhausted, human had to extract the metal from copper-bearing ores. 
One of the main places in Europe, apart from Mediterranean Cyprus island, was the Utsi Valley in the central Alpine region. We know that in 1991, in September 19, two German tourists find interesting archaeological artifact, the frozen dead body. We call this guy the Utsi Iceman. They didn't know who was this man, so they saw it was just a previous alpinist that unfortunately died in a glacier. However, when they delivered the body to the specialist, they discovered that it's one of the ancient men. The person who lived on our planet in times of striving of the copper work in the Chalcolithic civilization. We call him the Utsi Iceman, after the Uts Valley, where he was discovered. And he lived about 5,300 years before present. Because he fell down into the ice and got buried by the ice, and he was frozen all this time and preserved in the ice, we know what he had for lunch that day, we know the clothes he was wearing, we know everything about him, that it's all been preserved in the cold ice of Alps. After detailed studies, we know now that this man was living in the Alpen, central Alpen region, and that time it was rich in the copper-bearing ores, and it was a center of the striving Chalcolithic civilization. One of the theories suggested that he has a prospecting trip for copper ores when he died in the High Alps. It was quite a hard process to extract the copper from the ores, once they were extracted from the ground, they must be crushed and smelt in charcoal furnaces over 1000 degrees Celsius for several times to remove the impurities and produce blocks of pure copper. And then these blocks were transported to settlements for further processing or traded directly. For example, on this man, we found the axe blade which was cast in such a way, and his cutting edge was shaped by the cold hammering. We know that at that time they started the first human differentiation compared to stone because copper was more difficult to source and use. From the clothing and the equipment of this man, that's why archaeologists suggest that the Utsi man, high status individual, possibly of chief or copper smith. He was carrying both fine flint dagger imported from Italy and a metal axe with a copper blade. You can imagine that at that time when the ice started retreating, exposing new valleys, the new opportunities strive for people. People start moving up into the valleys, in the mountains, discovering new materials, new technologies. And that time also the settlement started, as we know from the history. The warmer, nicer climate, new routes and opportunity to trade. The communities were obliged to interact with each other like never before. People start developing a proto-writing to keep records of production, ownerships, and all the commercial transactions. And the social stratification started at that time. And the first time, society started divided into different castes or classes. Craftsmen, politicians, economical elite, the subordinates, probably slaves. Copper was the metal that Stad used in alloy with a tin to produce the bronze. Bronze Age, which started after the Chalcolite civilization, was one of the crucial and the pivoting point in the human history. But we'll talk about it in the next video. I hope you like this video and you will share it with anyone 
who might be interested. Like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.